I can remember 
versus Jay Uso. Oh, and this was the first match that I was like kind of disappointed in. I feel like this match was like very much overdone. It was literally 90% super kicks, which is so annoying at this point. Um, super kicks are supposed to be lethal and they just like out of your trade and super kicks like they're bunches. I don't know. I don't know. As somebody that grew up watching Shawn Michaels, um, the, the, the super kick has just been really overdone at this point and that's, that's really, you know, disappointing. But, uh, Jay got the win and Jimmy tried to, you know, you know, pull a fast one on him like, hey, sorry, sorry, just stop, stop, stop. And then he turned on him again. I don't know. And you would think that this would be the end of Jimmy versus Jay, but I don't think it is. Um, hopefully they have a, you know, some sort of, uh, culmination, uh, that is better than this because I, I just wasn't really the greatest fan of this match. Uh, Jay Uso did have Lil Wayne <laughs> announce him to the ring, which is pretty cool. And then, uh, they do, they did have some good moments, you know, like the yeet and the no yeet chance was, I don't know, it's pretty cool, but, uh, and I'm glad Jay got the win. I'm glad Jay got the win. Next up, we had a six-woman tag team match between uh, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi versus Damage Control. And this is, um, this match went exactly how I expected it to go. Um, you know, the hot tag to Jade Cargill, and then Jade Cargill just cleans house. I see this faction between uh, Bianca, Jade, and Naomi going for a while. And then Jade is going to turn heel on the other two. And I was talking about this in, in my Discord. Um, basically, they're calling themselves the big three. And um, I think that Jade Cargill is going to go the way of Kendrick Lamar. Say F the big three, it's just big me, and turn on the other two at some point. I think that is, uh, they're, if they're gonna call themselves the big three, um, I feel like they're gonna kind of piggyback off of that all like Drake diss in a way, like they're kind of doing their own version of Kendrick Lamar dissing J. Cole and Drake. That's where I see that going. I think, I think the other two are permanently faces, or faces for the time being, um, for the foreseeable future, but Jay Cargill, I feel like, would be a natural, a good, really good heel, and she's huge. That woman is impressively large. Um, it's insane. She's a, a physical specimen. Next up, we have the Intercontinental Championship match between Gunther and Sami Zayn, and I gotta tell you, I was really expecting Gunther to win this. Um, Gunther has completely, um, in, you know, taken the Intercontinental Championship, which was once, you know, a very highly coveted championship. Um, and he's taken it to the next level. Um, basically, the history of the Intercontinental Championship, it used to be a really big deal. And then for whatever reason, in like the 2000, in the 2010s, the Intercontinental Championship just became like, it, I mean, they passed that thing around like hotcakes. Just, it felt like every month there was a new Intercontinental Championship to the point where it was like, what's the purpose? And Gunther had it for 665 days, I believe. They're calling 
guys or um, what's the new guy the Braun Breaker Braun Breaker that would have been a, a solid uh, play for him um, either way I hope Sammy takes this and runs with it and I hope that uh, they don't go back to the, their old ways and just pass that title around because in my opinion like people who people um, are calling this title
pushes in, becomes the World Heavyweight Champion, and uh, th th all of this was great. It was a great way to open the show. Um, great opening, great closing for night two. Even better closing <laughs> for, for night two. Um, but um, it'll be interesting to see how long Damian Priest holds that belt. Um, I would think that Drew McIntyre is going to win it back. And then my prediction is they're going to do like a Drew McIntyre versus Gunther at like SummerSlam or maybe the Berlin show. I think they're actually going to Scotland as well. I don't know. I don't know where all their, their plans are, but that's my prediction. Um, and then we had the Bride versus the Final Testament in a street fight. And this had Bubba Ray Dudley as the guest referee and had Snoop Dogg on guest commentary. Um, this match, I was, I was not very interested in it at all. But Bubba Ray Dudley uh, getting...
I said, when it became Bloodline Rules, I thought to myself, there's, like, there's no way it's just gonna be Cody versus, like, six people or whatever. I figured, I figured this was gonna happen, and I had my, you know, had my thoughts. Um, but I thought it was just gonna be Stone Cold Steve Austin. I thought surely Stone Cold was gonna come out and help Cody, uh, and kind of fight off the rock, and I was kind of right about fighting off the rock, and, you know, um, let me, let me start over. Uh, they, they were putting on a great match, and then, uh, about 30 minutes in, I'd say, 40 minutes in, Solo Sokoa gets involved. Actually, first, sorry, Jay gets involved, um, in which Jimmy, or sorry, Jimmy gets involved, in which Jay comes and takes him out. Delivered, like, this crazy tackle off the ramp, and they landed on some tables or something like that. Really cool spot. And then Solo Sokoa comes out <laughs> and actually gave Cody Rhodes a pretty crazy, like, double finisher. It was like a spear Samoan spike finisher, like, double finisher, and I thought, I, I was like, wow, oh my god, they're, they're really gonna let Roman retain again. That was, that was a sub really big surprise kick out for me. Um, after that happened, John Cena comes out. Yes, John Cena comes out to dig out Solo Sokoa, who actually, storyline-wise, it actually made sense because Solo Sokoa, I believe, took out John Cena last time they were together. Um, him through a table, um, and as he's putting him through the table, like, seconds after putting him through the table, of course, whose music? The Rock. So now you have The Rock coming to the ring, you have John Cena in the ring, they're having this, uh, third time in a lifetime, uh, stare down, and, um, The Rock gets the better of John Cena, and then turns his attention to Cody Rhodes and he's holding his little his weight belt and he's gonna he's gonna whip him with the weight belt <laughs> and here's where I was like alright here comes Stone Cold here comes Stone Cold and of course the infamous gong hits the lights go out it's the Undertaker <laughs> I think mean, literally like when I'm when I'm telling this story back it sounds ridiculous because of how many people were involved in this match and how many extreme, like how many mega stars, like goats, were involved in this match. Um, Undertaker, of course, joke slams The Rock, the lights go out again, and the, when they come back, The Rock and The Undertaker are both gone. Um, and there's a chair in the ring. Seth Rollins, I forgot, I, I even completely forgot about Seth Rollins coming to help, um, with his shield music, um, it's Seth Rollins, Cody, and Roman in the ring, Roman grabs a chair, and instead of hitting Cody with it, he hits Seth right in the middle of the back, similar to when Seth turned on Roman. Roman then turns his attention to Cody, but it's too late. Cody catches him with a little, like, a front kick, and then gives him one, two, and a three crossroads, and gets the pin, and new Universal, WWE, WWE Universal Champion, 
excited to watch the Raw after Mania because it's the biggest Raw of the year. Um, who knows, maybe we still get Stone Cold uh, tonight instead of 